Example one, a simple dimensional analysis equation. First thing you do is read the equation, read the question, and determine what it is that's being asked. Two loaves of bread cost 428. How much? You're looking for words such as how much or how many. How much do 17 loaves cost? So what I'm looking for is a value, a number, a cost. And since my data is already in dollar signs, I'm going to start with that. So I'm going to write a box for the unknown number and a unit. And I'm going to put an equal sign. Now, because dimensional analysis deals with numerators and denominators, any number that's by itself that lives in the numerator, I'm going to put it over 1. Now I need a place to start. And I'm going to start here. And sometimes I draw a star to remind me that that is my starting place. So I'm going to start with 17 loaves. And I'm going to put that over 1 because 17 loaves is a value in and of itself. Now what I need to do, of course, is to make the unit on the right side exactly equal to the unit of the left. That's why it's called dimensional analysis. You pay attention to the dimension, to the unit. So what I need on the right side to make the right side look like the left side is the first thing I know I have to do is to get rid of the unit of loaves. Why? Because loaves is on the right side, but it's nowhere on the left side. So it's got to go. Now, the only way I can get something to go to leave the numerator is to put it in the denominator. So, so far, I know I have to do this. Hmm. Now the question is, do I have something with loaves in it that I can use? Well, I've already used this value once, so I can't use it. Let's look at what else is left in the question. If two loaves of bread cost 428, that is a simple relationship between two items. And so from that, I'm going to make what's called a conversion factor. And I can write it two ways. I know that two loaves cost $4.28. And I normally go ahead and put my conversion factors in parentheses just to remind me. Or it can be used upside down. I know that $4.28 will buy me two loaves. So any conversion factor, because these values, the top and the bottom, are equivalent, it equals 1. And if you flip it upside down, it still equals 1. So these are exactly equivalent. Hmm. Well, which one do I want to use? I'm going to use the bottom one and not the top one. Why? Because I have to use a conversion factor over here which puts loaves in the bottom, in the denominator. If I use this one, it puts loaves in the numerator and it won't cancel. So here we go. I'm going to use $4.28 in two loaves of bread. And now what happens? I can see that loaves cancels out. The only unit I'm left with on the right side is dollar signs. And the only in the numerator, and the only symbol that I'm looking for in my answer is dollar sign in the numerator. And so, since these match up, I'm now ready to go to my calculation. In my calculator, I punch out 17 times 4.28 divided by 2, and that gives me $36.38. Notice, dollar sign, dollar sign, I need a value, I calculated a value. This is my answer. Oh, by the way, multiplication and division is commutative. So I could have put 17 divided by 2 times 4.28. Or I could have punched 4.28 divided by 2 times 17. 
or I could have done 17 times 4.28 and then divide that by 2. It does not matter what order you do it so long as you remember this rule. If you're punching out a number in the numerator, you must precede it with a multiply sign. And if you punch out a number in the denominator, you must precede it with a divide by sign. And that's all you have to do. End of example one.